Welcome to Usability in Human Factors, Decision Support Systems, a Human Factors Approach. This is Lecture B. In this lecture, we will discuss an important topic to usability in human factors, decision support systems. A human factors approach. Decision support systems have been used in a variety of industries, including finance, transportation, and public works since the 1970s. It had its beginnings in health since the late 1950s, but became a more active area of research and development in the mid-1970s. With the growing penetration of clinical information systems, DSS is an effective vehicle for providing real-time guidance to clinicians. DSS includes lower technology solutions such as paper-based guidelines. However, we will focus on computer-based clinical decision support systems, CDSS, and computerized provider order entry systems. In this lecture, we will explore CDSS and consider its potential and pitfalls. The objectives for this unit, Decision Support Systems, a Human Factors Approach, Lecture B, are to describe the role and advantages of Clinical Decision Support Systems, CDSS. Increasingly, Humans have access to a wide range of tools that assist us in making a range of decisions from buying a car to maintaining our diet. Decision Support Systems, DSS, are interactive computer-based systems that help individuals use communications, data, and knowledge to solve problems and make decisions. DSS may also include paper-based guidelines and decision charts, but for the present purposes, we will restrict ourselves to computer-based DSS. It is important to note that DSS are intended to assist and guide human decisions, not render decisions in an automated fashion. Decision support systems have been used in a wide range of settings and fields of work, including banks, insurance, companies, and hospitals. Clinical decision support systems, CDSS, are tools that provide clinicians staff, and patients with knowledge and person-specific information presented at appropriate times to enhance health and health care. They do not provide generic medical advice, but consider patient-specific data to assist clinicians at the point of care. They have been designed to be used for a wide range of medical decisions, including decisions for prevention, screening, diagnosis, treatment, drug dosing, test ordering, and or chronic disease management. A tricorder is a fictional multifunction handheld device from the Star Trek science fiction television program. In this television program, a tricorder is used for sensor scanning, data analysis, and recording data. In a medical context, it is used by doctors to help diagnose diseases and collect bodily information about a patient. It is the ultimate decision support tool. Moreover, it is safe to say that few contemporary CDSS tools can measure up to the tricorder. Of course, the tricorder is the stuff of science fiction, and it's not likely that we will have any such device anytime soon. CDSS advice comes in several different forms. Alerts and reminders are the most common ones used in the context of clinical information systems. Alerts inform clinicians of potentially negative consequences from following a particular course of action. For example, a system may prompt a clinician that a patient has a particular allergy and that prescribing a particular drug of choice may have adverse effects. A reminder would be used to let a clinician know that it may be time for a patient with diabetes to have examinations of their feet and eyes given that a certain period of time has elapsed since their last examination. Although clinical decision support systems have been the subject of considerable controversy in medicine, there is much to recommend them for. One of the central premises in the use of CDS systems 
is to make better use of the ever-increasing available body of medical knowledge. There has been significant growth in our understanding of health and disease in recent years, yet this knowledge is slow to penetrate clinical practice. CDS tools offer great possibilities for making knowledge available to the practicing clinician at the point of care. The following list includes some of the possible uses for CDS. Reduced medication errors that cause adverse medical events. I think this speaks for itself. Improved management of specific acute and chronic conditions. Improved personalization of care for patients. The idea is that CDS tools can offer considerable precision in tailoring therapeutic choices to patients. Best clinical practices consistent with medical evidence. This is a primary goal of CDSS in general. Cost-effective and appropriate prescription medication use. Cost-effectiveness of CDSS has been somewhat difficult to demonstrate. However, there is no question that better treatment, fewer medical errors, and better patient monitoring and management could reduce costs over time. How much guidance should a clinical decision support system offer? This has been a much debated issue for several decades. Early expert systems, although they were rarely used in clinical practice, were oriented to providing answers rather than assists to clinicians. At the other end of the continuum are systems that offer no guidance whatsoever. In fact, some people argue that any such guidance removes precious autonomy from clinicians. In between the two extremes is a wide range of opinions. For example, the system may offer a complete set of alternatives for a therapeutic regimen, or it may narrow it down to two or three alternatives. It may go ahead and automatically execute the action, such as ordering investigative tests. It may allow a human to veto the suggested course of action, most of these choices are hypothetical. Some advocate the choice on the previous slide, which would allow the clinician to approve a suggested course of action. Most of the choices, from 6 to 10, are hypothetical and would not be allowed in practice. However, it provides one with a sense of the continuum and its effect on clinicians' decision-making. As you know by now, Computerized Provider Order Entry, or CPOE, systems support electronic entry of clinical orders for treatment of patients. They are, unarguably, one of the flagship applications of clinical informatics. They have increasingly become essential instruments of patient care. These systems enable the partial automation of the medication ordering process. Decision support tools are an integral part of a CPOE system. In fact, much of decision support research has been conducted in the context of CPOE systems. E-prescribing systems are outpatient systems that support a subset of the functions of CPOE systems. Although CPOE systems remain a controversial technology for reasons that will be discussed later, it offers significant promise. It has the potential for significantly reducing medication errors. Most adverse events in patients occur at the stage of drug ordering. CPOE can result in improvements in response time, efficiency of dispensing, and delivery of medication. The following list gives some of the advantages of CPOE systems. Orders can arrive to the pharmacy in less time than they would otherwise. They can be easily integrated into medical records and decision support systems. They can also be easily linked to drug-drug interaction warnings, a very important feature for reducing the possibilities of medical error and so forth. On a related note, they can be linked to adverse event reporting systems. In addition, there are claims that suggest 
that CPOE systems can generate significant financial savings, although the truth of the matter is that the promise of cost savings has not yet come to fruition. They do have the potential to reduce both under- and over-prescribing, as well as minimize incorrect medication choices. This concludes Lecture B of Unit 7, Decision Support Systems, a Human Factors Approach. To summarize, Clinical Decision Support Systems, CDSS, have been designed to be used for a wide range of medical decisions. CDSS advice comes in several different forms. CDSS, despite being controversial technology, has much to offer.